Okay, we have another fun flip through of the January 1975 Sumo World magazine. Thanks everybody for tuning back in to another flip through of Sumo World Magazine. This is the January 1975 edition. So it kicks off the new year of 1975. You can see um, artist uh, Lynn Sturm Levy, I believe. Uh, she was sketching a couple rikishi here. Uh, pretty cool. She's very, uh, very famous, uh, or at least was in the Sumo World. Um, and so, yeah, I got a couple highlights here. It looks like this was probably sold in a military base uh, in Japan, 95 cents. But, um, yeah, let's take a look inside. So it's kind of fun over here on the left, the mail order service, the things you could buy through the mail at the time. Look at this Takanohana mug, kind of a goofy looking picture there, but uh, pretty cool. Yokozuna painted scroll, that's kind of neat. Uh, yeah, take out the um, hand print notebook, that's pretty cool. And then a sumo shopping bag. There you go, a Yokozuna Noren. So anyway, pretty cool things you can get there. Here's what's in here. Uh, given that this was the New Year issue, so Kasugana Rijicho had a little um, greeting for the New Year, so take a look at that. This was an interesting uh, article as well. Uh, you know, we're in the midst of really high inflation, uh, but in, in Japan in 1975, same for them. You can see ticket prices um, and wages were going up. So here's uh, Yokozuna was now making 460,000 yen a month. Uh, I'm not sure how much that'll be in dollars, but I'll throw that up on the screen. But uh, yeah, everything was going up. And it was really interesting to read here. So uh, they're talking about Toki Tsukaze Beya uh, and the prices that they're seeing or increases in prices that they're seeing. Uh, Yukata material doubled. Uh, wooden geta or shoes, that was gone up a couple dollars. And look at this. Um, the cost of restuffing futons done after each basho comes to more than $1,600 each time. So 47 rikishi have to have their futons restuffed. So man, that's pretty expensive. Not even sure what entails that, but that's uh, pretty cool to read. Next article, Ro Hatano talks about his 20 years in covering sumo. I think one of his first assignments was uh, Azuma Fuji's retirement. He was a Yokozuna uh, so, and I got a card here. This is the 1953 Kagome Rikishi 7, very famous set. This one's of uh, Azuma Fuji. This is the R531 set. You can see that on the back here. So, yeah, so from 1953. So it's uh, again, about a year or two before he retired. Azuma Fuji's uh, R-Series Menko there. So yeah, take a look at that read. It's pretty interesting. Um, talks about Daiju getting married, and this is pretty interesting. Kitanoumi story is now going to be pressed on an LP. Uh, again, you know, everything was digital these days, but back in 1970s, uh, LPs and records, and you had to press them and you buy them and listen, listen to them at home. So, uh, pretty interesting. Futabayama story part five. So, for those of you who've been reading that, go ahead and take a look there. Certainly wanted to highlight a, a bromide that I got here. A, um, this is a BP series bromide, bromide photograph of Futabayama. It's uncatalogued right now. Uh, I'm still kind of researching it a little bit and seeing where I want to catalog it. But it looks like a kind of a, I don't know, a pharmacy advertisement. But there's a Futabayama BP series uh, bromide there. But uh, yeah, take a look at that. Um, all right. Talks about kind of a first gala of foreign... Foreign journalists, yeah. Foreign journalists are at the Correspondence Club of Japan. They hosted this kind of first-time award ceremony, gave some bottles of Johnny Walker, or at least the Johnny Walker Trophy, to, uh, to looks like Wajima there. Great picture there of uh, Mina Nogawa, Yokozuna fighting uh, Futabayama. God, he was huge. Six foot four, 340 pounds. So back in, back in the 1930s and 40s, I mean, that was just massive. So yeah, uh, from the last issue we talked about the Tonguns uh, who entered sumo, um, and, and specifically here on the left, this is a uh, Fukunoshima, who uh, once he left sumo, he became a very famous sumo wrestler. You know him as a uh, King Tonga or Haku. Um, 
And, and here, here's a uh, 1975 Osato mini card of the four. You can see that here, not in the same order, but um, this is a, a mini card that, uh, that was made of them um, from that set. So yeah, uh, as we go through each uh, more edition, you'll, we'll talk about uh, their, their rise and then ultimately their um, retirement from Sumo, unfortunately. But pretty cool, you read, read about that here. Tempura Inagiku, advertisement, we've seen that many times in other issues. Uh, Daikirin, former Ozeki, so here's his retirement. We've got a 1973 Kaobi card of Daikirin here. But um, pretty, uh, pretty popular wrestler, obviously, enough to get uh, a whole uh, article written about him. But uh, this Daikirin from the Kaobi set is card number three. Um, but... Um, yeah, read about uh, Daikirin and uh, a little bit about his his uh, his history and background. This talks a little bit about 1974 in review. I think more importantly in 74, we had Kita no Umi, who went on to become a Dai Yokozuna. Um, uh, he was promoted to Yokozuna at the time. Youngest ever Yokozuna at the time, 21 years, 2 months. And he actually was 2 months younger than Taiho when, uh, when Taiho became Yokozuna, so that's pretty cool. Here's a, again, 1975 Osato mini card of uh, Kita no Umi. You can, you can see that here. So yeah, take a look. Uh, 74 also saw the retirement of Kita no Fuji and, and uh, Koto, um, Koto Zakura. So they, uh, they both retired and really kind of bringing in a new era. As usual, I got the uh, Kyushu Basho highlights. So from the previous November Basho, take a look at those pictures. Talking about maybe some Jungyo or some overseas visits by sumo wrestlers. So that's kind of an interesting article here. This was, I actually tried to find this online. I couldn't, but this was a sumo decanter uh, was going to be offered as a prize um, for this sumo world contest. So you could read here about how to win that. That Talks a little bit about Kita no um, Fuji and Koto Zakura's uh, Danpatsu. That's their top knit cutting ceremony, really the Danpatsu Shiki. Uh, where where they basically retire top knit is cut off and uh, they're officially retired from sumo talks here uh, didn't quite catch the name of it uh, who's a uh, college sumo star entering the pro ranks but that was uh, at the time fairly uncommon to have college standouts enter i think uh, i think it's a little more common now you can see letters to the editor some glossary of sumo terms some of the um Editorial staff here, subscription rates, Hatsu Basho review. Uh, so who's gonna who's gonna take it? The Kaiketsu or Wakamitsugi really gonna try to challenge the two Yokozuna for the title. Mitsukoshi, you can see another advertisement here, um, and then you can see this uh, Toshi to Hoshi Tori Hyo. For the Hatsubasho, you can fill it in yourself and follow along with the tournament. Uh, what doesn't, we don't have the picture of Banzuke in this. Uh, I'm not sure why. I think it was uh, added, you know, kind of as a supplement in the middle, but uh, we lost it to time, unfortunately. And then the back here, looks like we've got, uh, again, the Martial Arts International book. You can order one, um, but, um, or maybe it's a magazine subscription, not sure. But anyway, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Uh, Definitely uh, really enjoy uh, going through these and, and digging up a little bit of history, right? We're coming up on almost 50 years old now, some of this information. So uh, definitely want to share a lot of this historical knowledge out uh, with the rest of the community. All right, everybody, thanks again for tuning in and sayonara. Bye.